at, at least in, in an academic environment, uh, to a lesser extent in the labs, but, but still, at least in my experience, uh, in the labs, you learn management techniques on the job. You know, because these uh, uh, science is done uh, usually in small teams, you know, it's less uh, uh, a boss and some acolytes, it's much more a, a group activity. Uh, and so you learn, um, you learn the management, the techniques of management um, in this informal and, and rather, uh, rather collaborative environment. So your first management actions are likely to be supervising a graduate student or interviewing for a postdoc or something like that. L later on, as you become uh, responsible for larger and larger groups of people, maybe two or three groups or maybe a whole department, you suddenly find yourself in a position where you're having to take decisions to provide leadership um, and you feel somewhat exposed because you have not been trained. You're a trained scientist, you know how to manage science, you don't know how to manage people. Um, and so if you're not careful, you, uh, you find yourself in this position of power without feeling empowered. And one of the important things which you need as a manager is not power, but empowerment. That you need to be able to be in a position to offer advice to people, to lead them, uh, to suggest. I, one, of, one of the things which I'm very keen on is something called the managerial we. Uh, you know, everyone's familiar with the royal we meaning I. We are not amused. Right? But the managerial we is an incredibly useful construct. Like in what I think we should do here is, what this actually means is what I think you should do. Um, but is, if you say what I think you should do, you're giving a managerial instruction. And certainly for, if someone tried to do that to me, I'd go, what? How dare you tell me what to do? Uh, whereas you know, if you use the managerial we, what I think we should do, you're making suggestion, but you're also accepting some of the responsibilities. Um, and it's picking up little techniques like that, which I think helps with managers. Um, and as I say, it's not that you have the power to tell them what to do, but you can empower them because you're empowered yourself to do the necessary. Um, another example is um, your supervision of graduate students. Um, your graduate students are very smart. You know, I, most of the graduate students I've ever had have been smarter than me, at least in, 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 in the things that they're doing. Um, and so telling them what to do isn't going to work. You know, they, they know much more than, than you do about what it is they're doing. But they will have problems. Um, now they can ask you, they can come to you and they can they can phrase it in three ways. Uh, they can say, what should I do? Uh, or they can say, should I do this or that? Or they can say, I'm thinking of doing this, what do you think? Now, of course, what you want, at least what I want as a supervisor, is the third. You want your graduate student who's not quite sure, but they come along and they say, now, I'm thinking of doing this, what do you think? And you either say, that's a great idea, or well, let's think about this for a moment, or whatever. And of course, the correct answer to either of the first two questions is, well, what do you think we should do? Uh, note the royal we, right? That you're helping them, you're, you're taking them along with you. Um, and th the general skills of management are not innate. You know, they, 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 they are learned and acquired, and it's better to acquire them in a deliberate manner than by trial and sadly error. Uh, the trial is okay, but the errors are not so great. Um, and uh, if, if, you can av if you can learn what works theoretically uh, in advance or what's likely to work, 
uh, then you have a chance of avoiding at least some of the, some of the more obvious errors. <laughs>